In the early 19th century, amidst the cliffs of Lyme Regis along the English Channel, a remarkable figure emerged whose discoveries would reshape our understanding of prehistoric life. Mary Anning, born in 1799, was a pioneering paleontologist and fossil collector. Largely self-taught and driven by an insatiable curiosity for the ancient remnants buried within the rocks. Her unyielding determination led her to unearth the skeletons of creatures long extinct, such as the ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs, which challenged established scientific beliefs of her time. Mary Anning's profound contributions to paleontology continue to inspire generations, marking her as a trailblazer who forever changed our perception of the Earth's history. Preserved along the English Channel coast of southern England resides the longest standing history of geological fossils dating back to the age of dinosaurs. Marked as a world heritage site, the Jurassic Coast in England remains a popular area of tourism for fossil hunters, adventure seekers, and local businesses. Perhaps one of the most important areas a part of this historic coast can be marked as the birthplace of Mary Anning, one of history's most underappreciated fossil collectors and paleontologists. Located in Lyme Regis, her monument is amplified by the town's gorgeous cliff sides and beaches, as well as a variety of colorful shops and restaurants. One such business, the Lyme Regis Brewery, expresses a unique connection between Anning and beer of all things. Uh, sort of ce celebrate that heritage and that history. So uh, we did a partnership brew. It's a double IPA, so it's a really strong beer. She's a strong world woman, strong vision, and very much stood up for herself and put herself on the map. Specialized local beers with quirky names and designs adorn the shelves of the brewery. But it's not just Mary Anning that inspires the Lyme Regis Brewery, but rather the entire identity of the town of Lyme Regis itself. So our beers are named after Jurassic Coast, Fossils, uh, Black Fens are a prime example. So yeah, we're, it, it's pretty interwoven into kind of who we are and it gives our brewery that identity, as opposed to other breweries that are kind of just about a beer and you know, could have a name that means absolutely nothing to their area. Um, geolocation and, and kind of um, you know, the tourism and the factor is, is pretty strong to what we do. We now tell more of the story about the inspiration for each of the beer names and also the recipes sometimes because that does play into it um, on the packaging um, and the merchandise and sort of the brand as well for each of the beers. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's pretty important for us and, and we want people to not just sit drinking beer but actually think about beer they drink as well. A good example um, from the Jurassic case would be like Black Fen. So it's a dark water. Um, the cliffs here, you know, they're made of mudstones. Uh, Black Fen itself is a, is a dark cliff. That's where Mary Anning found her first ichthyosaur. So the front of the packaging is kind of, you know, the kind of a rustic type. Looks like it's a rock, almost inspired. Um, there's a picture of the ichthyosaur um, that tells a story as well on the website and stuff about, you know, you why did his name that? If it means anything to anybody, um, a lot of people know that because you know it's quite quite important area, uh, part of the, part of the local area. Um, and then in contrast to that, there's things like Revenge. Um, so Revenge is named after a boat that was sent out to find the Spanish Armadas in the town. So um, yeah, there's kind of there's things that are more sort of geolo geological based, and there's other things that kind of touch on the history of the town. They don't just draw on the history of the town, however, opting to also highlight some of the more modern elements. So some of it is kind of more current as well. So uh, 284 degrees, um, that's one of our really popular beers. It's a session IPA, but that's actually the bearing you take when you come into the harbour there. So if you're the wrong side, you're on the rocks. If you're the right side, you're sailing free and, and, you're, and you're home. So. Yeah, there's, there's other elements that kind of pick up off the town itself or its sort of current culture as well, but a lot of historical and it's kind of what makes life in the stage. Wes was not one of the original owners of the brewery, and in fact, the brewery isn't even in its original location. This is the Old Town Mill, one of the oldest buildings in Lyme Regis and where the original brewery was located. Yeah, it was a malt house, um, the mill in Redundant, um, and about 25 years ago, a fundraising committee basically got a lot of fun and um, but they stored the mill back to big white and water mill. Uh, a group of gents decided to form the town mill brewery. They ran that for about 10 years. wasn't big, but we added this one, we were very successful, so hence the takeover from us. And, and the name changed to Lime Regis Brewery. It's not gone far though. The new Lime Regis Brewery situated within the same courtyard as the historic mill. Unfortunately, the move did not seem to help the original owners. I'm Born and raised sort of local in town, um, and when we found out that it was, was going to go to administration, um, 
you know, we thought we'd try and do something to save it. So myself and a few friends just cost together and took all the assets of the business, and did the name, and um, none of us knew anything about running a brewery. Uh, all we knew how to do was drink beer. Uh, so we've, we've had to kind of, you know, find by the seat of our pants, I think, what they say. Um, and we've, yeah, we've made it work. We now employ um, six full-time members of staff. We've got another six seasonal members of staff. Uh, we've increased turnover by sort of 400, 500 percent. Um, and the business is sustainable now. Um, there's no debts anymore. Um, it's doing really well. So, yeah. It's safe to say that leaning into the history of the town of Lyme Regis is one of the ways small businesses can thrive here and differentiate themselves from competitors. And that history is being promoted now more than ever, as dedicated locals attempt to add Anning's name to the general population's vernacular. I mean, there's a statue around the corner. So, Mary Annie Rocks was... Um, um, a, a slight team of ladies that decided they kind of wanted to shout about um, sort of heritage and, and what she means to the town and how important she was um, to the geological uh, just makeup with the fossil and stuff. Didn't they? So they, they basically said, look, we need a statue. We need to kind of raise awareness of what she did and how important she was. So they, they started sort of fundraising uh, and did a crowd funder. They raised an awful lot of money um, and got an awful lot of publicity. So there's a beautiful statue now that looks out over Blind Bed uh, where, where she fossiled and, and hunted and found, you know, these lizards to see that, that she proved it. It's this celebration and preservation of the history of this area that drives foundations like the Jurassic Coast Trust to exist. Yeah, so they're an organization that um, essentially promote the Jurassic Coast, uh, promote tourism um, and sort of responsibility for traders and visitors um, so they can get the most out of the area, um, preserving it, um, you know, learning as much as they can while they're here. Um, so they work with local businesses um, and the public as well to kind of promote uh, what the Jurassic Coast is. It isn't just, I suppose, what makes the Jurassic Coast unique is it's not just about the sort of fossiling and geological history here, but the area is rich in, in other historical sorts of things as well. So, you know, tying both of those together, working with the businesses and, and, and yeah, sort of promoting it. Businesses like the Lime Regis Brewery are benefiting from organizations like the Jurassic Coast Trust, and hopefully because of this focus on preservation, these local businesses will continue to thrive and flourish while also espousing the history of the area.